We're in Siberia. It's so cold here that freezing gusts of wind are burning your face. All that white snow seems to be blinding you. This place resembles Antarctica because of the permafrost. Recently, a group of scientists researched one of the local rivers. With the help of a drilling rig, they extracted several samples of frozen soil. The scientists were shocked to find living creatures inside the ice. Later in the laboratory, they realized that the creatures were microscopic multi-celled organisms known as deloid rotifers. These creatures looked like little worms. Scientists knew that these worms could live in frozen conditions for up to 10 years. But the age of the rotifers found in the ice was about 24,000 years. And after defrosting, they began to reproduce as if they had been sleeping for several hours, not thousands of years. Further analysis showed that these organisms could stay frozen for hundreds of thousands of years. The rotifers might have lived during the time when people didn't invent the wheel yet. And this isn't their only superpower. Deloid rotifers are among the most radioactively resistant animals on Earth. They can survive in places where there's no oxygen and water. They can also stay alive in areas with high acidity and can live without food and water for a long time. By the way, these are not the only creatures that are known for living for thousands of years. Particular types of moss and some microorganisms are also almost immortal. Nematodes, also called roundworms, are some of the most adaptive varieties of worms in the world. Imagine the Eiffel Tower standing tall and proud. And now, let's make it 10 times higher and place it underground. Exactly at this depth, many thousands of feet under the surface, scientists discovered these creatures. There's no sunlight and almost no air in this place. And since it's much closer to Earth's core than the surface of our planet, the temperature here is higher than in the middle of the hottest desert. Millions of tons of soil above create insane pressure. But all this couldn't prevent life from developing here. When roundworms run out of air, food, or when the temperature becomes too high, they get into a unique state of stasis, or deep hibernation. In this mode, the worm's metabolism slows down, and almost all the processes in their bodies stop. The creatures can sleep for a very long time and only wake up when the environment becomes more livable. By the way, you don't have to go so deep underground to find these creatures. Nematodes are found all over the world. They can live in hot springs, deserts, high in the mountains, among the harsh ices of Antarctica, or inside animals and humans. Our next invulnerable creatures are tardigrades, also known as water bears. These are microscopic eight-legged invertebrates closely related to arthropods. It's impossible to see them with the unaided eye. But a conventional microscope will allow you to see tardigrades in detail. They look like minuscule bears. They're called water bears because they need a thin layer of water around their bodies at all times. It's necessary to prevent dehydration. Tardigrades have been found in all kinds of environments, from ocean depths to sand dunes. They're incredibly robust, thanks to their unique organism structure. Yeah, they look soft, but their body is covered with a tough cuticle. This coating resembles the exoskeletons of grasshoppers, mantises, and many other insects. Water bears shed their old layer of the cuticle when they need to grow. Each of their eight legs has four to six claws, which helps them cling to any surface. The bears can survive at a temperature that's almost three times as cold as the temperature in the ice of Antarctica. Heat doesn't harm them either. They have been proved to survive at the temperature that makes water boil. Also, water bears are not afraid of radiation and high pressure. In the depths of the ocean, pressure can destroy alloys of the strongest metals. But these creatures can withstand pressures six times greater. But the coolest thing is that they can live in the vacuum of space. Our planet has a magnetic field. This is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. Tardigrades don't need this protection. They can go into near-Earth orbit and come back unharmed. All thanks to a protein protecting their DNA from ionizing radiation. Like other immortal organisms, water bears can fall into a state of cryptobiosis. Tardigrades pull their head and legs inside their bodies and fall asleep. If the surrounding conditions suggest freezing, drying out, or experiencing a lack of oxygen, they will remain in this barrel form until the situation improves. So those are microscopic organisms and microbes that can only be seen through a microscope. But how about something bigger? 
Meet ironclad beetles. They live in the southwestern U.S. and Mexico. These insects can not survive high temperatures, live without oxygen, or in conditions of increased radiation. But their shells are so tough that they can only be pierced with a drill or hammer. Their durable exoskeletons are made of a special substance, chitin. It can also be found in the armor of crabs or shrimp. And still, the chitin of the ironclad beetle is so durable that it allows this creature to withstand the impact of a car moving at high speed. In times of danger, they can hide their whiskers and strong legs in special recesses in their shell. Other animals can't bite through the armor, so they spit the beetle out and leave to look for lunch somewhere else. As soon as the danger disappears, the bug stretches out its legs again and goes about its business. Also, the armor saves the beetles from dehydration, which is very useful in hot areas of Mexico and the southwestern U.S. Inside the exoskeleton, they can store moisture. In other words, these bugs can absorb water whenever they find it and transport this liquid inside themselves. The next creatures are incredibly fragile, but they know how to survive in places where almost no other animals can live. We're going to the southeast of Romania, near the Black Sea. Here, on a desolate wide plain, you can notice a pit. This is a mine leading deep underground. The air on the surface of our planet usually contains around 20% oxygen, but in the mine, it's only 10%. Inside the cave, the air also has an increased content of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. People can't breathe there without an oxygen tank. We can probably say that the water and air there are poisoned. Almost no animals would be able to survive here. Still, 48 species of living organisms have been found in this cave. 33 of them are newly discovered species. And they aren't the only microbes or bacteria that can't be seen without a microscope. Something bigger lives here. Strange white snails crawl over the walls of the mines. Transparent shrimp and a bunch of unknown kind of leeches swim in the water. White centipedes with huge whiskers and creepy white spiders run on the ground. And they all have been growing here for almost 5 million years. You might notice a water scorpion and another unidentified species of this animal. It doesn't look like its relatives living in hot sands or tropical forests. No living creature here looks ordinary at all. All animals are either white or transparent. They have no eyes, but are equipped with long paws and antennae whiskers that help them navigate in this dark space. The deeper you go into the cave, the less oxygen the air contains. But the number of living organisms is increasing. The air is filled with methane and carbon dioxide. All the inhabitants of this cave have never seen the light of the sun and have never gone out of the darkness. It seems impossible to survive in such conditions where plants don't produce oxygen. The answer to the question of their survival is hidden in a small lake. The surface of the water is covered with strange foam. If you look closely, you can see that this white substance is alive. It resembles soft, wet paper that is easy to tear. The thing is billions of living organisms, bacteria called autotrophs. There's much more carbon dioxide in the cave than there is outside. And these bacteria, like plants, absorb it. But they don't do this with the help of photosynthesis, which means they don't need sunlight. They use water for chemosynthesis. What these bacteria secrete is food for other bacteria. And these other bacteria are food for bigger creatures. A unique food cycle that you can't find anywhere else on the planet only exists here.